Hi Brian James at Micro Four Thirds Guy here once again with today's video um, and today I'm going to be looking at how you can use the remote control applica application through your iPad or your phone or your Android device to use on your G series Lumix camera either the G, G9, G7 whatever the GX series cameras, GX8 is here or the G8 series cameras to use for uh, remote control but also image transfer so let's have a little look well very very simple app first of all what you need to do is you need to download the image app the Panasonic image app from the App Store on your device at the, either the iOS one for the uh, Apple devices or the Android one personally I'm using Apple so I've got it here and I'm actually using it on my, my phone so my phone is talking to my G9 at the moment so you're on there um, so I'm actually recording myself on this and the reason I'm saying this doing this video is because a few people have asked how I can get my focus really sharp now the problem with using sharp focus on this is at the moment I've got a 50mm f1.7 Lumix lens on that G9 in front of me. It's great. I've got the flippy out rotating screen. I can see myself on the screen at the side. That's marvellous. Can't really see if I'm in focus because if, if I hold my arm out fully from here I'm not even half distance to where the camera is. So I can't adjust anything. If I wanted to put it into the manual, manual focus mode for instance there's no chance that I've got of actually being able to, to reach the focusing ring. And because it's only a three inch screen sticking out the side, I can't really see, I'm 59 years old for goodness sake, I can't really see if I'm in focus properly or not. With this, I'm on my iPhone. I've got the ability to see myself straight on there. I'm using eye autofocus and I can actually see the eye points on that thing. And I can see where the crosshairs are on that. But also, <coughs> it gives me the ability to see if I'm actually in focus or not, if the focus is sharp and if there's, not, if there's a problem. What it also allows me to do is to touch focus onto somewhere else if I want to. So I can touch on the on the back fence, for instance, and I can change the type of focus that I've got. So I'm going to leave that running there. That's my eye. That's my. But here I've got my iPad in front of me, and what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be using it on my GX8, and it works in exactly the same way whichever these cameras that you have. So the GX8 is there. First thing I need to do is to open it out, and if you're going to function. On the GX8 it's function 8, uh, on the G9 I think it's function 7, but the, on the screen there is a, a Wi-Fi connection function. Then on my iPad or iPhone or Android device, I need to go up my Wi-Fi connections and I'll see listed there, in this case two cameras because I've got the G9 and the GX8, but I've got my GX8 so I'm just going to hit that and that's going to connect on and if I look on the back of the camera it's going to tell me that I need to launch the image app. So let's go and do that. On the, on the pad and I shall launch my image app software. It's now connecting to the camera. The camera's now telling me it's under remote control and I can see on the screen here that I've got the GX8. Don't worry about the numbers behind, that's an individual number for this particular camera. So if you had two GX8s it would be GX8 dash and something else. The GX9 obviously is a different number on that and that's individualized to these cameras. Now what I'm going to do I've got the GX8 on a manual at the moment, so the controls which are shown here, just like on the camera itself, will change depending on which mode you've got. So if I hit remote operation, I now can see on the back of the GX8 my screen, but I can also see on the iPad here the screen here. And we can see that's nicely out of focus. So, as with anything else, we can change what our focus is. So let's hit touch the focus onto something. So we've got the ability to touch focus. Now at the moment, I'm touching the, the iPad. The camera's there, so when you see me changing things, I'm actually changing on the iPad straight in front of me. So the Robin's in nice focus. We can see that it's on f5.6, 80th of a second. Let's change that slightly. So if we press the FSS, we can change the f-stop and the shutter speed. Let's get it something really silly. So our focus is really pulled down. And we can also see that we can adjust down the bottom our exposure. So now on f2.5, let's take it a little bit more. Let's take it to f2, 400th of a second, f1.8, 500th of a second. So it's going to give us a very, very shallow depth of field. So on the robin there, if we just touch the jar, for instance, let's get rid of that screen there. Touch the jar. It brings the autofocus in and again I'm doing this on my iPad and I can see because it's a nice big picture on the iPad I can actually show you it on there 
It's a nice big picture. I can see on there if it's sharp or not. The robin's now gone out of focus and the pole, which the pole has actually got one of these umbrellas on for this table, is out of focus. Let's hit the base of that pole. And that brings the pole into focus. The robin's now way out of focus at the back, so is the jar. And just by touching it, the same as you would on the back of your touch screen, you can change the focus very, very easily. So again, with me doing this on the image app, for me to get myself in focus, I can't reach that. It's just impossible for me to reach or even see properly. But even though this is a small screen on this, it's close. I can get it really, really close and I can see that I'm perfectly in focus on that. It's picking up on my left eye. You, can, you won't be able to see the crosshairs, but on there you can see the crosshairs. So really, really useful for that. I actually set it off recording by pressing the red button on here. So let's have a, let's record something on the GX8. So on the iPad, let's press the red button. The GX8 has now gone into record mode. It's recording video. It's five seconds into the video. And again, if I change the focus on there, we can see the focus on the video when we play this back is changing too. So on the pole, on the jar, and on the robin at the back. When it catches up. There is sometimes a little time lag on this, so be very be careful on it. But generally it gives you the ability to do all those things. We can pause it. We can even take photos. So let's take a photograph of the robin just by pressing the camera button. Instead of the red button, we press the camera button on the right hand side. So we have the robin in focus. There's a shot taken. You could hear the shutter go. Let's click on the top of the jar lid. It's in focus. Press the shutter release. Next photo taken. And if we go at the bottom of the pole, again, press that. What this does is it gives you the ability, because it's quite a range on Wi-Fi, the camera's acting as a Wi-Fi point. You don't need routers, anything like this. This will work if there's no Wi-Fi signal around. It's Wi-Fi directly between the camera and the device. So basically what this does is it gives you the ability to set this up as a remote shutter release, um, but also remote control. So I can change the ISO, I can change the white balance, I can change the auto exposure type, um, I can change the, um, the, the uh, all, all sorts of things. Whatever you can do on this, you can pretty much do if it's electronic control. I can even bring the Q menu up. And the Q menu on this is a little bit different than what's on the back, but it lets me change things like the, the quality. I can change it from, at the moment I've got on raw fine, I can change that to uh, say raw or just fine or standard or whatever. So I can do those. I can change my video record quality. So let's return them back off them. So you've got loads of things that you can do. So we've got the control of the camera. Really, really good. Let's see what we can do with that if I go back to home. So if I hit the home button now, the camera display has gone off. I've come out the remote operation there. My phone's gone dead, so unfortunately I can't see what's happening anymore. But let's hit transfer. Let's transfer a selection of photos. Now this will take a few seconds because it's got to transfer the images across the thumbnails across, create the thumbnails and put them across through the Wi-Fi onto the iPad. So if we give it just a few seconds. Now what I've done is I've gone up the top and I've hit the little camera because that allows you to see which where the photos are because you can transfer them both ways. So hit Lumix on this one. And you can see that I've got a few different videos on this. Um, and also I've got some photos at the end. I've got three photos. The first one is the one of the robin. So I've just clicked on that. I can see it wonderful on there. If I touch on there and then touch the bottom left, you'll see that there's a, a little camera symbol and transfer. That's now copying that file from the camera, the GX8, straight across to the iPad. Let's go to the next photo. This one's the one on the jar. Again, we'll touch that. We'll transfer that across. And finally, this is the one which is focused on the bottom of the pole. We'll transfer that across. Now what I'm going to do when this is finished, I'm going to come out of this, hit return, hit home, and I'm going to close my image app. That's now disconnected the camera. I can switch the camera off, 
that's back to normal. It hasn't done anything on the camera apart from transfer the shots. Now if I go on to my photos. There's my first photo. There's one of the Robin, we can see that clearly on there. And what's, what I can do on this, of course, it's just another picture in here. So I can do all sorts of things. I could crop it if I wanted to. So let's crop the Robin in. We can also change let's make it a black and white image of that one this is being done on the iPad obviously so it's the same as any other picture on the iPad we've transferred it over so a really useful tool I use this a lot if I'm on holiday because what I can do is I can do a full day shooting on the on the cards and the camera I've got two cards and usually what I do on a remote shoot like that is I'll get them to, to simultaneously write to both cards so I've got to back up in the camera anyway when I get back to my hotel I'll stick um, the I'll stick the Wi-Fi on, transfer the images across. I don't need to have cables. I don't need to be taking image cables across with me, although I can. But on an iPad, for instance, it's a little bit more difficult. You've got to have the the USB adapter. Well, this I can transfer it straight across to my iPad. And if I've got a Wi-Fi signal in the hotel, that can also upload those photos and videos straight to the cloud, which means I've got more backup. So I've got two cards in the camera, plus I've got an online backup which is now in the cloud, which can be accessed when I get home. But also it gives me the ability to do some basic editing on the iPad or if I'm using something like um, like Photoshop on for for mobile I can do all the fancy bits and pieces that I'd be doing normally or I could even put it onto if I have a, a, a laptop, an iMac or something like that, um, a MacBook I can transfer them onto that and use the full Photoshop or the full Lightroom and I can do everything that I do at home. They can then be uploaded to social media very very easily through the Wi-Fi connection so it's a really really useful tool. The remote shooting option really is fantastic for me as well because I used to do a lot of coverage of events and sometimes at an event you want to have a camera maybe up on a rooftop looking down onto somewhere but you also want to have a second camera where you can move around. This is fabulous because what I can do is I can actually leave that camera in a remote position and have it lined up where I want it to. I can take my shots but I can also then use the image app and launch that camera to actually take shots from remote as well as the camera I've got in my hand. Fabulous. Really, really useful tool. And because it's Wi-Fi, it goes a bit further than just Bluetooth. It can, you know, you've got a hundred meters or so if you want to, especially in, in direct line of sight, you, you've probably got more than that. And again, you don't need to be going through a router because the camera is its own Wi-Fi point. So it's only direct access through Wi-Fi between the camera and the mobile device. Once again, my name is Brian James, that Micro Four Thirds guy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful if you are a Lumix user. Just to let you know that Olympus cameras have a similar system, and I'll take you through an Olympus one very, very soon. But whatever it is, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. There's also a little bell for notifications. If you would like to leave me a small donation for a cup of coffee or something or to add towards the fuel for my, my vehicle to go out and do the shots that I do, there's a PayPal link below. Thank you very much for all the ones who've done it. And I've also started my Patreon link as well. So if you'd be, like to be a patron of the, of the channel, there's a Patreon link below there where I'm going to be starting to upload special stuff, especially for, pay, uh, for patrons, so you can see some of the extra footage that you don't see in these. My name is Brian James, the Microphone Thirds guy. Enjoy your shooting till the next time. Unfortunately, there's a buzzer going off. <laughs> Enjoy your shooting till the next time, and I'll see you soon. All the best. Bye bye.